Welcome to another video, Stags and Does. Today we are joined by Coughlin, and we are going to be live reacting to all of the videos that we thought were the best trailers for upcoming games during the Day of Devs and the Summer Games Fest, basically E3 of 2021. Uh, we've compiled a queue of some that we've seen already and some that we haven't seen at all, but these will still be live reaction of us going over what we talked about the first time we watched them and potentially seeing some really cool hype-able games that we'll definitely probably be playing on stream if they end up coming out and being incredible. Uh, Coughlin, you here? Yes, sir. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Uh, I guess this uh, entire stream... Uh, so, or at least what IGN is doing. I suppose that they are focusing primarily on independent developers. But I did notice some AAA titles in there, such as with Blizzard. So I'm a little bit unsure what yeah. the theme is for this one. I guess this is just outliers, right? Yeah, I think there's a couple <laughs> outliers. Generally, I think most of the big game developers are going to release their like uh, de their their games for the panels like they're all going to have panels starting tomorrow ending on tuesday so they're each going to have their different panels like two hours long with world premiere and all the normal e3 stuff the Summerfest gaming was done by ign to get a bunch of these independent developers from what i know to release trailers to get everyone kind of hyped about it all in the same place watching on the same uh, at the same time and also the day of devs was an opportunity for developers of these smaller games or developers of the larger games like you guys will see to be able to come in and kind of describe what we're ta looking at because trailers as everyone knows especially for games isn't the most revealing so if they don't think their trailer is that good a lot of them will be able to come in and do like a commentary which we've got a couple of those queued up to be able to watch if you guys like this content please thumb up the crap out of it let us know that you really enjoy me live reacting with the commentary of Coughlin of these videos and of these games coming out soon and getting excited about it and what we think of them. So then we'll do more of them. We'll go through and watch all of the trailers and teasers of the videos that came out during this time. And if you guys really like this on Sunday, we'll do a live stream watch party of the IGN E3 panels. I think that would be incredible, but only if this video does really well. I'm posting it the day that we are watching these. This will be as live current as we can we just got done streaming if you guys ever want to do catch our live streams currently our schedule is like 12 to 2 or 6 to 8 central if you guys want more information on that we'll post a link in the description below of this video to a new type of voice community server called gilded we just created it please join us on that uh, apply to join the server we'll accept your application and you'll get a lot of information about what we do inside a stream and outside a stream with videos and content thank you guys so much for joining us Let's get this underway. You excited? I've got Evil Dead the Game as the first trailer. Do you remember this one? I do. I would actually like to clarify right off the bat that uh, um, there are... We did see some of these yes. already. And we added those to the playlist because we thought there was something worth mentioning a second time. Yes. But there are some of these that we haven't seen. Almost. All, so this is just brand new. Yeah. Almost all of these first six you guys can see are ones from yesterday's reveals. So they're going to be videos that we've already seen, but we do want to talk about. And we thought our commentary that we were just giving each other because we we're watching it as buddies was really worthwhile for everyone else, in our opinion, because we're, you know, the community creators matters to a lot of people, apparently. So we figured we would share our opinions with these things. And thank you guys so much for making our opinions matter. We feel extremely humbled by it. But let's go ahead and start this off. I'm excited about Evil Dead um, for a lot of reasons. As many people of the community will know, you guys will see immediately after this game video starts about why I'm excited about this. Made by Boss Team Games. They've done a couple games. They're the ones that made uh, Friday the 13th on Xbox. Some really iconic characters from the Evil Dead series, if you guys are fans. Combat looks incredible and fun. I'm here to bring you the lowdown on the upcoming Evil Dead the game. The game. Look at that chainsaw. Switches from melee to range pretty quickly. I wonder if there's a reload, but they don't show it. Do you think this is a multiplayer map, or is it like you think this is part of the campaign that we're seeing a lot of? Here? I don't know if there's actually a campaign. From what we've seen of this, he kind of talks about it. It's an asymmetric 4v1 game, very much like 
uh, Dead by Daylight or Evolve. He's talking about playing the demon now. But who would want to do that? He'd yeah. Be You'd be a dick for playing the demon. So cool. So I think more asymmetric games coming out will create competition and allow Dead by Daylight and Evolve, if it ever decides to make another version of Evolve, to improve their games. Uh, competition's always good. I think also bringing awareness to the genre as a whole. Oh. I don't know exactly how po how popular this genre even is. You're like the first person I actually met to actually play a lot of these types of games. So yeah, yeah this is definitely going to bring a lot of uh, spotlight to this entire place. So. Yeah, I don't I don't know if Ash Evil Dead is going to be like the game that does it, but Friday the 13th was huge. That was such a good one. And Dead by Daylight obviously is a massive viewer intake on that content, but. I love the idea of combat. I have no idea how it could be balanced, which obviously is always everyone's big question. But the way that combat's pretty accurate there, the hitbox, it's uh, tracking hitbox. It's not actually bullet travel time. Awesome. I hope the classes have talents or some type of level progression. It seems like they only have four characters currently, so let's hope they're not just cosmetic. But here, the important thing, we will be kind of demonstrating this. As you guys know, me and Coffin are huge Xbox gamers, and the community likes to digest a lot of our Xbox content. We definitely plan on doing a lot more Xbox forward content going forward. So this is a game that will be on Xbox, which means this will probably be a game that me and Coffin will pick up and die multiple times to someone who's a god. Always is one. Yeah, this guy is I don't the... I know who this guy is. This is the king from uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead 2 when he gets sent back in time. Oh. But he's an evil dude. He's possessed by the, the demons. And it's... He's like an undead... Like, they create this whole undead army. That's a great movie. Go watch Ash vs. Evil Dead 2. <laughs> but uh, that's also coming this year. It says 2021. So uh, we'll let these continue, but we'll talk a little bit about that last one. Another asymmetric game, like we said, is going to be incredible. Um, I love 4v1. I think that's a great format for content. I think it's a great format for games. It's really, really fun. But again, like I said, it's going to be hard to balance. And if it's not balanced well... And there's overpowered this way, overpowered this way. Some characters will be overpowered. It'll be fun to un it won't be fun to play certain characters, or it'll never be fun to play the evil person. And you have to kind of like force a rotation to make people play it. That's tough. That's really really tough for a developer to do. I know that Ash is already in Dead by Daylight, which is kind of weird. I wish that they would have just collaborated with an already asymmetric style game better then create their own, but I think competition might do it good as well. So, I know that you don't really play Asymmetric. Did that game excite you at all? Honestly, I think it did have a bit of the... I don't know, it was probably the gore that really kind of drew, drew me in. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but I think that is one of the biggest appeals of these types of games, is that you are kind of... It's intense... And that is something that you don't really see in a lot of games. I would have to say that's probably one of the things that allowed God of War to succeed when it first came out. Yeah, absolutely. Having these strong these strong visuals. So yeah, I guess there's there is something like that that really does get the adrenaline going. So, I yeah, I, there's something really cool there. One hundred percent agree, and uh, I I can't I, I like I said one hundred percent agree. I think gore in games is like a shock factor, and I think as adults consuming games, we like to be able to play games that we know are made for us. Trying to avoid the kid community at all costs nowadays and the gaming community is like a number one priority. So a game that automatically will not be sold to children or will not be advertised to children specifically, I think automatically allures adults to it and that includes us. So I think it's a good thing. I think the gore will be very, very interesting. It looks really, really clean and seamless. And there's gonna be some trailers that we bring up that we'll talk about this a little bit. That looks like a game made in 2021. A lot of the trailers, oh, absolutely. A lot of the trailers look like games were made for the original Xbox or prior, and we're so confused by it because it's like maybe there's a market for that retro look, or they didn't have enough money. But it's like there are some really weird trailers out there that are like, no one's gonna buy this game. This is an Xbox Pass game only. Like that's so weird. This next one, oh man, what a meme! What a meme! <laughs> you get excited, guys. This one's so funny. Norman Reedus. All you PlayStation boys are already getting all creamy in your pants for this one.
So this was a show how much uh, we play Xbox. Uh, yeah, we were, we were unsure that this game even came out. Yeah, like, what we, we I, it was so funny because we knew so much about this game, at, like as like a advertisement consumer. We actually had never played it, and I never knew this game actually came out. But I actually do know quite a lot about it. We watched several videos of the content of this game and how the game plays afterwards because I was interested. We found it's only PlayStation. But it was not the game that I thought it was going to be. That's why this meme is so funny. So this is made by the people who made Metal Gear Solid, if you guys don't know who that is. Uh, the main character in that game is Snake. And he basically sneaks around very similar bases like this from point A to point B. So Norman Reedus here is evaluating his situation, trying to figure out how to get through this area without starting a fight because he's not the strongest fighter, even though he kills billions of zombies every day. And there's a meme in, in Metal Gear Solid where the dude walks around in a box and if they ever see the box moving, it does the exclamation point and it's like, oh, what was that noise, right? So the freaking developers of this game, by the way, game's not Metal Gear Solid. This is a completely different game. Everyone's like, is he gonna get in the box? He's gonna get in the box. It's Metal Gear Solid again. We're doing it, boys. <laughs> Nights and cheers. I know. I love the idea that Norman Reedus had to do this in a motion capture suit. And he jumps in the box. <laughs> that which is impressive, by the way. I don't know if I could get down that position so readily. I in know. A box like that. Like, I never noticed. Where did his backpack first, go? First take. Hold on. It shrunk, I guess. Yeah, because when he comes in, it's fully it's fully stocked up like the Jenga tower, right? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. And then I know what in the very there. next scene it's it's not that way anymore. It had a bunch of propane tanks in it, I guess. I Maybe know. he put it down if he didn't see it. Yeah. Anyways, he gets in the box, and then he closes the box, realizes that's a really dumb idea, and puts the box away. <laughs> this is a trailer for a $65 game, by the way. Rip bruised oranges, by the way. Yeah, all those oranges. So this is a DLC release for the game Death Stranding. If you guys have played that game... Um, it says Director's Cut. Everyone says it's DLC, but I think it's actually just a re-release of the game with new content. Freaking Kojima. What a meme production, dude. That's such a funny trailer. Every single time I watch it, it fucking slays me. I would hope that the re-release would have came with an Xbox release, but... Ah, uh, yeah, that would have been dope. I actually would have gotten the achievements in it. Um, from what we've seen, it seems like a very silly game. If you guys like it, good for you. It's not really my style, but... The graphics seem really, really good, and there is an interesting inventory system there that is kind of cool. So, to put that in perspective, what just happened, because some of you guys might not have processed it. Huge, multi, probably million dollar trailer for this game. To be able to, first of all, pay for the slot, and then also be able to produce that game and the trailer for it, and design what you want to do with it. Was just of Norman Reedus walking up into a fort. Grabbing a box, jumping in the box, and then putting the box away. What'd you get from the game? <laughs> What'd you get from the game? There's zero gameplay There's in it. I, we had to look up gameplay because they didn't tell us anything. It's such a meme. We had no idea what the game was about. <laughs> Kojima is straight memeing, dude. It's straight memeing. I remember we looked at the trailers. Or no, we looked at the comments. Hold on, let's look at the comments again. This is so funny. Freaking... <laughs> We were like, what was that? That was so awkward. We have, uh, we just saw a man empty a box, go inside it, come out, and then place it back. God damn it, Kojima. <laughs> this was legendary. Almost a thousand one-ups on that, by the way. Sam, for this mission, you have to become a package and deliver yourself. Oh my gosh. Really just dropped a trailer with Norman sitting in a box. It's such a meme. It's such a funny meme, and I love it. I love developer companies that like can't, like know not to take themselves seriously and understand their community. It's hilarious. That is so funny. Next up, we have uh, Overwatch 2. Was hoping to get a little bit more information about the game. Hopefully, hopefully they talk about it at one of their panels if, if Blizz does a panel. But all they did yesterday was a skin update for two characters. Great to have you here on Kickoff Live. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, we are excited to learn more about what's planned for Overwatch 2. You guys recently had a, a PvP live stream that I watched, and you revealed some, uh, some changes coming to Overwatch 2. Uh, what can you tell us? What's the latest? Yeah, so we recently announced that 
Overwatch 2's format is changing to a 5v5 team format. This requires... It is worth noting for everyone that is a Blizzard fan will realize that this is not the developer for Overwatch. The head developer for Overwatch recently left the company after he said his baby was Overwatch 2. Aaron Keller has done announcements and he has been in several different sort of press videos, I guess is one way you can say it. But it says Overwatch game director now. So we now 100% know that Jeff is no longer working on this game and he has completely left the company to work with Chris Metzen on what will probably be the best MMO of all time. But furthermore, this game no longer has its lead developer. It now has this guy in that, in that place. What that says about the game, we're not sure, but that has officially 100% been confirmed. New yet familiar to fans of our strategic team-based combat. Yeah, uh, it was great to see you guys playing, and uh, you know, I long awaited for people to get a chance to go hands-on with it. Um, and today, I know you brought us a look at uh, some skins for some of the uh, some of the characters, right? Yeah, the team is so passionate about updating the look and the feel of the world of Overwatch. And one aspect of that is... And they've been doing this so far. They've been releasing um, a lot of different updated so visuals of the game, the one at a time, slowly at a time, as they get more done. Right, well, so this is a Baptiste and Sandra. Sombra. Yeah, you, you didn't really like this skin, did you? My like, initial you were, reaction to this... Blue was bad. It's gross. It's icky. Look how icky this skin is. Uh, yuck. Throw up. Gross. I mean, I get it that they're trying to like highlight that he's a healer, and I guess he's no longer a part of Talon. He's more part of Overwatch. My lore understanding of him was he was actually on Talon with Reaper and Widowmaker, but I think now he's actually fully on Overwatch, or he always was Overwatch, and I had that misunderstood. Maybe that's why they changed his colors, because his colors used to be black, like a dark black charcoal and red, which I loved, because obviously red is the best. So they changed him to seem more light-sided with the light and the scion. It's good. I think if this was the first time you've ever seen this character, you would love it. Right? Because, Coffin, have you played Overwatch? Oh, of course. I, I, I really like Baptiste. I think his uh, three-shot burst rifle is definitely reminiscent of the battle rifle for me, so I really like playing Baptiste. Me too. And I, I do Overwatch. Yeah. I, I love that style of gun, too. We've talked about that as well, where it's all like, like yeah. burst fire weapons are our go-to weapons in most games. I just... This, I think their idea of what they said their principle a long time ago was to keep characters extremely iconic, do not change their silhouette too much, and just to make it seem like an updated version, this is a full-on overhaul. His hairline is completely different, which changes the silhouette, and his color scheme is very different. Now, everyone's going to say in the comments, he's going to have a lot of different colors, he's going to have a lot of different skins. It's about the baseline, right? Like, this was just gross. I don't like any of these colors. I was not a fan. I was not a fan. I would have to say that's one of the more difficult parts of Overwatch as well, is that they're trying to portray a story through a purely PvP format. Yeah. And that's it's not like it's Fortnite where there's, oh, there's kind of a story, like there's something there. No, this is like hugely story driven, but you have to go way out of your way to find it. Yeah, and I think so that's the that goal of wet is even more important. Yeah, and I think Overwatch 2 is going to do a lot of that single player content, delve diving, team, mm -hmm. PvE storytelling, which I think they've always wanted to do. We've seen the, the level up process, the talents that they're going to implement. That's yeah. all incredible stuff. I'm very excited for it. Release the, the game Sombra already. looks good. Yeah, this yeah. is like the a 10 out of 10. Me and Coughlin both agree, right? Oh, yeah. It's just so like, good. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like the hairstyle of uh, the first Overwatch's Sombra, but I, but I think that the just the overall attire of Sombra just really fits even better. Like, I wonder if she changed sides as well. I, well I, she was always, like, independent, right? Like, yeah. she never really was on Talon. I think she... I mean, in most of the the story that we've seen a lot of the pve content that they release for holidays and stuff she's on she's on talent's team like we've seen some cinematics yeah. where she's working with talent i don't know what they're going to do with allegiances or what they're going to do with story in the next one but you could tell that you see her immediately you know she is baptiste you need a second you need a double take mm -hmm. right that's what i'm kind of nervous yeah. about so i think she looks incredible i love all the updates look at that shiny for us to 
that oh, shield. Yeah. That's beautiful. So it's such a good look. Nice yeah. textures. Look at the texture on the gloves. It's fucking good. It's so beautiful. If you look closely, you can actually see circuit. I didn't notice the toed boots before. That's cool. Yeah, she's kind of she's wearing those. Fast hacker, so it all makes sense. <laughs> Whoa, look at the Tesseract there. So great for fans to see these characters you know and love. A 3D box within a 3D box. It's four dimensional shape, actually, I think. I said that wrong. Either way. Sombra, 10 out of 10. Baptiste, 2 out of 10. I disagree with that change, but we'll see if it ends up making sense to the story. This next one looks really fun. This is. We're stuck in this wreck until everybody learns the rules. Yep, all of them. Oh, yeah. Rule number one. Yep. Certain weapons work. It's like a weird power defense like thing yeah so we'll talk about this too because there was a bunch of games that released with this top-down format and we're calling them diablo clones they're not even going to be played like diablo but based off the camera and the way that it looks and the way the enemies look they're diablo style right and i think a lot of that has to come with blizz like i'm giving credit to blizzard a lot here but i think blizzard announcing diablo 4 last year gave time for all these developers to create these diablo is games to kind of jump on the hype train if you will so you're going to see a couple of these trailers where the Diablo games, they're top down, just like this, sort of dungeon shooter looter things. This one actually I brought in because I really do like the concept. I think me and Coughlin will definitely be playing this one on stream. It's, it cool. seems really cool. I'll definitely be playing this. Yeah. yeah. And the animation style, what do you think of the animation style? If we look back at the, the trailer. I mean, it, right is, there. it is kind of... It reminds me of Borderlands in a way. Mm-hmm. Less, where uh, it's just how the color palette with the shading mm -hmm. kind of gives that appearance to me. Not necessarily Borderlands is how you know it, but Telltale Borderlands. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit more cartoony yeah. than Borderlands. I think Borderlands has way sharper mm -hmm. lines. Like you can see here, like that, yeah. that edge isn't that sharp, so it kind of fades into the background. Borderlands is right. very, like everything is so identified with black, harsh lines on all of its edges, so it kind of pops a little more. This is subtle. Well, I, I guess I was feeling more the palette and the shading. Yes. That's where I'm really coming from. That's that where I'm getting at. But yeah, you're right. Borderlands does have... Mm -hmm. I do agree with you. It is Borderlands-esque. Right, yeah. it, it's got that same vibes, for sure. For sure. It's good. I, I, overall, I think it's good. Rule number one. Certain weapons work better on I am nervous monsters. that the combat... Learn it or die. Oh. Looks I'll tough. Be there. I think that if they can keep it down to Rule the four two. classes Use and not get too crazy to with that, that I think it's just going to be pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think they should get too crazy because with Because it's their catnip. And if it goes... I think it'd be better will. to just up the crazy and back. Yeah. Yep. Do different maps. Just like that. I hope they do release some Rule classes three. every now and then, but only after Watch they've done a lot of work with everything. Even if you've got the gun, the turrets, and the crystal, you can't do everything by yourself. If you fight alone, you die alone. Trailer's uh, incredible, by the way. Again. This was one of the and best trailers we saw. Four? Oh, yeah. Well, if you've got all that going, but you still can't win, you gotta change the squad. A couple little abilities there. Tag team. I'm in. Xbox One, also on Switch. Also on Steam. I loved that. That game looked really good. I loved the trailer because it actually left us with zero questions. We were able to derive our own questions about it with our own imagination, but we understood enough of the game without being too spoiled about stuff going on to be like, yeah, I'd play that. And I think that's... Yeah. Like, and any questions that we have, we're actually wanting to find out whenever the game comes out. So. Exactly. And that, I think we're that's a beautiful trailer. A lot of the other trailers mm -hmm. are not great. So you guys can see here, uh, this is the Among Us roadmap, which is really, really funny. A new map. And a brand new mode that the community plays by itself anyways. So hide and seek, baby! Let's go! I'm so excited. Some new colors. Banana being a color because of the community. A lot of community well, made executions. Yeah, and, and they added achievements. 
for a good reason. There's achievements in game as well as achievements now, officially on. Oh, they didn't. That was not the video that they released it. We have to go back. Right here. What are those buttons right there, Coughlin? On the left, on the right. If that doesn't oh, do it to you, I look mean, right there. Oh, hey! I mean, yeah, it's definitely on Xbox. Yeah, it's on Is Xbox. Is it not on Xbox already? I, I'm not sure if it's on Xbox or not, but I remember watching this going, oh, oh, I thought it was. oh, it's on Xbox now. Yeah, so if it's already on Xbox, we might have to pick that one up. I'll play it on Xbox to get the achievements. That'll be so much fun. So we brought Elder Land. This is called Elder and... Uh, Elder and? Elder Land? I'm not sure. Elder and. Um, and we watched this one, and this was one of the games that we wanted to highlight, where it's just a platformer, which is kind of an old-style game. I don't know if there's a, a new generation that's really looking for good platformers, but this was a game that we'd get on, like, I don't know, Sega Genesis, or 64, and I'd think 64 is even advanced for it. Dreamcast, Atari. Like, these old, like, you go to an arcade and play with quarters and platformers could be making a comeback we have a different platformer that we also i think we will bring up later that has a completely different art style but you guys can see that this oh, art man. style it was the one that um i forgot what the name of it was but we're gonna have to look it up later it was yeah something blade yeah I, we're, yeah we're, i think you're right we'll yeah. find it we'll find it but you'll see a complete different this is what we were talking about earlier this art style to me does not look like a game made in 2020 and that's probably what they're going for. They're probably going for a retro look. I just don't know if that actually appeals to you. If you guys like this, if this, you guys like this art style versus the one we'll show you next, um, let us know if you guys like it or not. Because this, to me, will not do better based off of its visuals. It will only do better if the gameplay is incredible. So they're really banking on the idea. Like they're probably cutting costs by the visuals and trying to make it a better gameplay game. It looks great, don't get me wrong. I actually do like the art style. It's just not a game that looks like it was made this year. I wonder sure. how this upgrade is going to go though. Like this might actually be one of those weird platformers that the, it's not gonna be a platformer like Mario where it's just pretty stagnant the entire way. Like this does seem like an RPG element to the platform. That, might be pretty interesting. I don't know if that was. I think they're gonna bring up a shovel knight, right? Is this is, is this the one where they bring in shovel? Knight? No, that was the other one that we talked about. Oh yeah. That was the one that was that was kind of weird. Only on Steam. This is the other thing that's kind of weird for me. I've only ever played a platformer with a controller in my hand. Right? Have you ever I played mean, a I've, platformer I've, on PC? I mean. No, I personally have not. I actually try to stay away from platformers. I'm not a big platformer person. Mm -hmm. um, but whenever I have played them, they'd always been on a mobile device yeah. or on a console. Exactly. I guess mobile devices is a better example of like something in your hand. I if this game goes out on mobile, I think it'll do extremely well. Like a ten dollar mobile game, I think it'll I think it will sell. I think I would play that game on mobile if I'm at work and bored. I I'll, actually now that you mention it, yeah, especially how big phones are, like this yeah. is absolutely doable on mobile. Yeah, I play the so. crap out of mobile, oh. like <laughs> dude, developers, make it a mobile game. Like I hate saying that, but this would actually do well on it. I just don't see this not being like on the Xbox Game Pass eventually. So yeah. we'll see it how it goes. Be, it might it might be on the PC version of the Xbox Game Pass. You might see it. Oh, I don't really want to lose my spot in queue. We'll have to remember to bring up that video afterwards. Maybe it actually is in queue further down. Who knows? All right, so there's one more game that we've seen, and after that, it's all going to be fresh games. Completely fresh. So this one we have seen. And this one's also, like, such a weird game. In the Eternal Cylinder, players will have to explore a vibrant alien world teeming with strange life. Survival is a Whenever I saw this, I immediately thought of Spore. Because yeah. Spore is the only place where you can see things overcome. look as ridiculous as this. Yes, and it makes sense. Extreme heat of this desert environment. So, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what the game is, and then we'll let her talk, and then we'll talk over her so that you guys don't have to listen to her or feel like you're missing out on the trailer. You guys should also watch all of these trailers. We'll link IGN's account in the description below. You guys can go find all of these trailers at IGN uh, YouTube channel. Go check them out. That's where they all are. So this game, from what it's described to what she talks about, is a survival-based sort of um, battle royale game, I guess. Like, 
it's hard to say that, but it's an open world survival game, I guess is the best way to describe it. And then there's going to be multiple, multiple, multiple amount of people that you can play with. Now, I don't know if you could kill each other in it, because if you can, that becomes a battle royale, where you just try to evolve fast enough to be able to be the sole survivor. That's not really explained well. However, if this is just an open world survivor game, then it'll do extremely well, because you can get up with your friends, you can get up a group of like 20 people, start playing, try to evolve as fast as possible, get to the end, and have a great time doing it. It'll be really, really fun. The way she describes it is you play this little blob creature that goes through a bunch of different environments and you react to the environments and you adapt and you evolve yourself. You have to find food, you get stronger resistance to heat, you get stronger resistance to cold, you'll get more weapons to use or you'll evolve your body to be more speedy or be able to fly or whatever. All these different sort of like really cool creature adaptations. But yes, it does look very reminiscent of Spore. It is very Spore-like. I also think it's extremely comical and will be an amazing game to play with the stream community and uh, playing with viewers 100%. I'm actually excited about this one. I didn't, I don't, well, were you excited about it? Actually, I wasn't until I just realized what this is. Okay. This is a new genre of roguelike. Oh That's yeah? That's what this is. There's a couple games because in the market that do this powers- already. I don't know of any, honestly. I don't spend a lot of time in roguelikes. Okay. Like, the closest that I got is, is I'm going to admit, is Torghast in World of Warcraft. Right? Oh, man. I mean, I, I'm, I'm familiar, uh, like, the, uh, was it, was it Isaac? Was it Bindings of Isaac? Yeah, that's, that's and, kind of roguelike. Uh, where you do it multiple uh, times and you get stronger every time you do it. Right? That's what yeah. you're kind of talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's what this is. I think this might be a bit of a... Um, a battle royale scenario where you are uh, trying to adapt and be the last one alive. I think it might be a little bit that. There's a game on the market right now. I don't know what it's called. Uh, chat will let me know or comments will let me know. It's a dinosaur survivor battle royale. You get on with your friends and you pick a dinosaur, a type of dinosaur. There's like 13 different types. You play either herbivore or carnivore and you, there's no winning. It's just a constant server that you can load into and play. If you play a carnivore, your source of food is herbivores. If you play an herbivore, your source of food is abundant. However, you can get eaten. So the entire aspect of that game is there's predators and there's not predators, and you have to band together to herd naturally, just like a regular dinosaur would, with your friends and other people on the server. But the only way you can communicate in game is with like calls, and every dinosaur's call is different. It's a very interesting game. I hope this game learns a lot from that one because that game is very, very fun where it's like a community driven economy with like I guess herbivores and carnivores but it's also an extremely fun survival game that you can kind of put on and have a fun time with stream and fun and stream with your uh, friends and stuff let's get into this video a little bit more let her talk a little more make your health but you see he's eating there so there is food the Trebum are resourceful creatures there's heat here you can see that he's really hot if you feed them right so if you feed it and here environmental conditions are only one so you say he ate like a lava fruit and he became more resistant to heat so that's like the idea of evolving and adapting and then look at this giant spore creature dangers you will face as the world is it looks just like spore it's so funny some natural some not the look at the baby face creatures have the ability to remove your mutations Threatening your ability to survive in multiple ways. So we can already see Learning the meta evolution. Look at the cute okay. boy. Look at the cute boy. Everyone, everyone has that one friend. Like, God damn it, Gary. Why'd you evolve into a cube, you idiot? Survival. <laughs> As they are an essential source of vital <laughs> I didn't even resources. notice the cube. It's so funny. I didn't Yeah, get out of here, Gary. You're the reason we you died. <laughs> so good, dude. Discovering. I think he might have been the only one who survived that encounter, actually. Maybe, yeah, you might be right. Curiosity. That's it. That's all they said about it. Such a weird name for it. Like, of all the names on the on the whiteboard, Mm -hmm. Eternal Solar. There's got to be more to like the story or something like that to make this make sense. But it was just so weird to go through that entire dialogue of adapting to survive. And then the eternal cylinder. Yep, because yeah. that of all the words that I would think of describes to the game. Describe what you just told me. It was not eternal cylinder. Describes the game one hundred percent. Also on Xbox, like, but it, this is what's interesting. Does not say Series X. It says Xbox One. 
do they have a date yeah, for it? It's PS4 and not PS5. So. Yeah, it just says coming soon. So I mean, we could be playing that game next week. That's what that means, right? It could be. Yeah. Uh, interesting that it says Xbox One. That's all I'll say. This is our all right, all right, all right. Look at the graphics. Oh god. Everything after this point is completely new. There's a Sonic game that's coming out, and uh, it's called a new Sonic game or new Sonic Team game. I'm excited to find out. Is it Sonic Heroes 2? Please. Damn, that looks so good. That's all we get? Oh, there's more, there's more. Please, please, please. What? What is happening? I mean, it's, it's Series X. This one does say Series X. That's all we got? I there. know. I was, I was... What? Oh, man. Yeah. All right, so Sonic Heroes was a game that was released way back when on the GameCube and the original Xbox. And uh, it was... I don't know if it was actually GameCube. I think it was the original Xbox only. Maybe Xbox 360 even. Been. But it was so good. You basically played it either the Chaos Team, the Dark Team, the uh, Hero Team, and there's one more, the Light Team with... Uh, the with Big the Cat and stuff, so yeah, it was awesome. It was a great game. You basically had a power, a f uh, flyer, and a speedster on your team, and they had different roles. And a lot of the puzzles and objectives had to be done by the specific like you had to use your power guy for this, you had to use your flying guy for this. What made it interesting was it was online and multiplayer, and you could race against other people to create this sort of like uh, speed trial competitive community. And it was so much fun to get your friends over to get like a four player split screen game and just try to beat them in races. And, and it was actually a really well designed, probably the best designed Sonic game besides Sonic DX and Sonic Adventure. But that one was just, I love Sonic Heroes and I hope that they do, oh, do something yeah. like it. Absolutely. All right. Uh, this is called Survival Machine. Oh. Oh. Uh oh, hello. This 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 kind of uh, escalated quickly. Uh, yeah. So, Minecraft. Better looking than Minecraft. Fortnite. What Fortnite was supposed to be for all the actual Fortnite believers. Oh, do you think this is a multiplayer game, or do you think this might be a single player RPG? There's multiple people yeah. he's with. Yeah, right there. You just got your answer. Oh my God, I'm so excited. So it's like Mortal Engines, like the it's a it's a Mortal Engines Fortnite met with Minecraft. I love that. That's actually gonna be fucking dope. It's only on Steam. Coming in 2022, long time away. But only on Steam. We'll be keeping that one away. Okay. All right. This was All in right. here. I'm gonna admit something really quick. <laughs> this was in here because I of Copland. I have not played this game. I have not played the original game. And I've been thinking about picking it up and giving it a try. I only hear good things about this game. And now that I see that there is a Literature Club Plus, I need to know whether or not if this is like a re-release re -release with more, or if this is a sequel. Because, well, that's going to determine whether or not I get it now, you know? <laughs> so, All right. All let's right. see what this is about. This will draw out a specific community. It's fine. It, that, it's not my style of game. <laughs> this was recommended by Coughlin. If you guys like this game, leave a comment below. Leave, leave a comment below if you guys like this game. And be like, yo, I'm with Coughlin. That's the comment. And Coughlin will go out over and heart every one of those comments. That's, that's what he'll do. Leave a comment if you guys are excited about Literature Club 2. Doki Doki. A game that will unnerve you. Uncontrollably horrific. I can say with great certainty, this is one of the scariest games I have ever played. God damn it. It's terrifying. It's actually terrifying. <laughs> I'm gonna get banned. I'm gonna get banned on YouTube. <laughs> Look at those titties. What? Oh my god. Plus, new side stories. Improvise or improved HD, 100% unlockable images. I'm sure all of those are also what school appropriate. This? this is. I mean, I've never played a dating sim. Doki Doki Literature Club, dude. 
on Xbox. There's achievements. Oh, we have to play it. Yeah. June thirtieth. Oh god, yeah. Oh god, no. Uh, oh god, no. It's coming out sooner than I thought. I, I lie. We're not gonna play it. We're not playing it on stream. It's not worth the achievements. My Xbox Microsoft account will get banned. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Uh, call it all the leaks. This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Yeah. It's awesome. I guess the same could be said for Eddie Diddy. So this is a DLC release for World War Z, which is a great game. On Game Pass. Class-based uh, survival... Zombie game, no much like Left 4 Dead. No is oh, is that what this is? Yeah, okay. this was the updated Left 4 Dead game. They just made it World War Z. Oh, is it also made by Val? Um, I don't think so. Uh, maybe. Our ranks have grown. I mean, I would have completely ignored this game because I thought it would have been a movie cash, uh, cash grab. No, I actually played it and it's really fucking good. So there's specific characters and you can play those characters and level up their classes and they get specific abilities and weapons and they get better with specific stuff. There's like a tank, a healer. It's really, really well done. I just actually haven't really given it the time of day. I wish I could play it more. I just never really had people to play with, and my community at the time wasn't really interested in it. But if you guys are interested in this game, let us know. Let us know on Gilded or not, because I'll play it. There will be no given a good five-year break. I think that we claw back from I think survival like games like this. Today we make a stand. Give people freedom. Because I mean, maybe I'm still just. Leftover from the whole day Z. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Minecraft was supposed to be a zombie horror game. Technically, it, it is. Like, came out. Technically, yeah. it is. And it's. I think it's um, exciting. I actually really do like World War Z. And if, if this is an update uh, to the game, or if this is just a brand new game itself, like World War Z 2, it'll be great. Uh, World War Z 1 was really, really good. And because it's on the Game Pass, it'll be, it'll be done extremely well. So, uh, Microsoft doesn't put anything on the Game Pass that's garbage, right? Right, guys. Right, well, chat. It seems to be on. It seems to be on brand with World War Z, though. Yeah, it, it it was right out of the movie, but it's actually a good design game to be like a movie reiteration game. This is called Skatebird, and that was the only image I saw of it. Um, in the initial trailer that I like added this to queue, reminded me of a very nostalgic game, Disney Skate. Immediately looking at this, and I was excited to see more about it. Where are these runes? That's that's runic. That's the, it's, a, it's a Nordic. <laughs> there's an Easter egg. Yeah, that's a that's a Nordic keyboard. You judging? Yeah. Norse people are allowed to play WoW too. I, I, I'm gonna well, no, it's a dead language. <laughs> that's fair enough. I just want to read. I just want to know if it says anything. So it's skate, right? It's a skateboard game. It's, it's Tony Hawk Pro Skateboarder. Or it's Disney it's Skate. brilliant because you're using a bird, so you don't have to be, like, anatomically, ugh, anatomically correct with your crashes and stuff like that. A bird's name was Matt. <laughs> and this bird's name is Seagull. <laughs> and that bird's name is Sam King. I think it'll be fun. It seems like there's a story. I don't know how. Are you a pet bird that's doing this while your owner's away? This gives me... All right, so I'm going to be doing a blast from the past here. Okay, so there were two games that I played when I was about 11, 12 years old, right? Mm -hmm. 10 years old, so like in that time. Frame. One was, uh, it was like a green soldier game, Sarge's Heroes 2. Oh, I love that game. I love that and game. And that idea of having this intense battle within a bunch of school toys oh it's so funny well a bunch of kids toys or or like in the fridge and it wasn't like even like appropriate like... for kids like that that game you blow no, each other wasn't. up you like rip off arms and shit it's awful and it's hilarious <laughs> and people melt with a flamethrower yeah. like you didn't turn into a puddle of yeah. plastic no like these like these games i think the idea of putting something super intense in a a very light environment i really like that mm -hmm. 
I think this will be good. If you guys like skateboarding games, I mean, this one looks just as good as any of the other ones. In fact, there could be some really cool, fun bird mechanics like flying, like that guy was just flo floating around. And it did look like there is some type of campaign or some story mode. So there, this could be more than just... This might be a one-time playthrough. We might give this a go. It is on Xbox, so there's going to be achievements. Could be a, a achievements well, in chill like, stream. Did you like tech decks or whatever those were? I played with tech playing, decks. Uh, skateboards. That's with, what I think this fingers. is. I think the story of this yeah, game I is a is... pet bird on a tech deck. Yeah. With I, all his other that's... pet bird friends. <laughs> Wearing outfits and shit. Oh, God. This looks... Actually, I kind of want to go through all the maps and see how clever people got with... It is fun to see stuff in. to scale. It's That's pretty cool. Alright, we are on to the next one, which is called Core Keeper. Another retro animated style game. Looks a lot like Terria so far. Or, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Stardew Valley. It looks a lot like Stardew Valley in Minecraft. Wow. I never played Stardew. So this, this is basically Stardew Valley. There's even a farm. I'm, get, I'm getting huge Zelda vibes, though. So. Yeah, this is just a really dope underground Stardew Valley. Hell yeah. And it's going to be multiplayer. This will be really good for the stream community. We could have our own personal server. There's giant bugs? What? This would be dope to do with the with the community. Glurch the Abominous moth Mass. There's bosses? Shit. Okay. Access, early access, late 2021, only on Steam. Wow, early access, late 2021. And they must be pretty confident that they're going to release it. Unbound, yeah, worlds really. apart. For those of you guys who have ever played an Unbound game. New one coming out. So, going back to that other platformer, I'm glad that we have one in here. This is a platformer. That I think what makes platformers good nowadays, because we've got Ori, we've got all those other Xbox platformers that are really, really good. And what makes them incredible is three things. Incredible concept. Incredible, 100% extremely important music. You have to have a really good soundtrack. And three is the visual graphics per a scene. You need to be able to look at this and be in awe with every single shot. That dungeon game that we said should be on mobile just doesn't have that feeling for me it, it just doesn't this does already immediately like this one scene i'm all like wow that's a massive area and the uh like music that you guys can hear with this trailer listen to this tell me it's not an already incredible soundtrack it's so good I love this. I'm probably going to get this one. This will be a great... Oh, fuck yeah. That's so good. It will be coming July 28th. Was that on Xbox? I didn't see. Please be on Xbox. If it's not on Xbox, it's not on us. It is not. It's Switch or it's Steam. On Switch, though. That is interesting. Maybe we'll get it on Switch. If it was Xbox, I'd get it 100%. We'll have to see. If you guys want this one, please let us know in Gilded or in the comments below. Grab your friends and start your journey through the lands of I got. I put this one in because I thought this would be a great stream game as well. Trees and build bridges. Well, you'll try to. Nature has other plans. Let's get traveling. Uh, pandas. Pandas. A strange. Keep an eye on this mischievous monkey. Whoa, wait, hold he on. has what, no what's plans going on of there? helping. Can you like... Little rascal, stop that. When you've had enough of this guy's shenanigans, travel across the ocean to the sunny shores of Hawaii. Did I not mention the sharks and pirates? Whoops. <laughs> it's like a puzzle-solving <laughs> teamwork game. Back in time. Yes, This yeah. land is the ultimate challenge for any lumberjack. There's swamps, lava, and... Uh, a lot of construction, dinosaurs. a lot of harvesting of materials and doing stuff with it. What better place to begin Puzzle-solving. This will be really fun on stream for like me and you. Like we could probably two man this and have a good time. Nature's team, find out what it's like on the wild side. You, you can find your favorite part of the game is chasing your friends off of cliffs. You can be asymmetric only on Switch and Steam. Okay, and Steam. Don't get me wrong. Switch needs some games. Yeah, I've been. I looked at their shelves lately, and they are not inspiring. If it's not Pokemon Smash or. Mm -hmm. Mario, there's like nothing. Alright, so we've saved the best two for last. Should we watch the original trailer for Tiny Tina's before we watch the breakdown? 
Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay. So we watched Tiny T Tina's Wonderland trailer yesterday. And today, with the developer day, they had a breakdown of the trailer because, let's be real, that trailer needed it. Desperately. Desperately. And uh, I want to know so much more about this. So let's watch this real fast. And then we'll go up to the developer. For those of you who already know who Tiny Tina is, and you understand the idea concept of Wonderlands, this should get you immediately hyped. This is this was the best game announced, for sure. Fate. It soars on the wind. Beautiful. It rises from the grave. It stalks the ocean floor. I'm trying to get like a good point of contrast. So right there at the gun. What we talked about a little bit earlier. So spoiler alert, this game is made by the people who did Borderlands. And it's expected to be a Borderlands-esque game. That's what I'm assuming it to be. I hope it's just a Borderlands game in a fantasy setting. Praise the game lords that it is. I can't wait for the developer breakdown to tell us more about it. Look at that harsh, dark black lines, right? That's what I was trying to talk about. Like that is like what makes their animation style pop. That cell shaded look where everything is like, look at this huge dark black line for that, like that great shadow contrast, but it makes it look 3D even though it's a 2D image. Incredible. It's such good animation style. I love the Borderlands style. That's just all I was talking about earlier. You can oh, I, yeah, I, I can see that. But you can. Make your own. There we go, boy! <laughs> Andy Samberg, Wanda Sykes. I hope these are all voice actors for characters. They're all comedians. Will Arnett. Ashley Birch, who plays Tiny Tina. And her royal highness. You have an interesting theory about this, but Stallion. It's an interesting theory. You said it when we first watched the trailer. Oh, where I think it's a playable character? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be really awesome. Roll four initiative, suckers. So they gave four voice actors and one butt Stallion. Generally, there's four characters in a game. They're not going to make you play Tiny Tina. She's the main character. She's the DM. So it is it is a reasonable assumption to think that the Butt Stallion could be a playable character. They've done meme characters before with Claptrap and uh, Krieg, the Psycho. They, they, they've done it. So it is very possible. I would love to see the Butt Stallion be a playable character. And then the other three comedians working with that content. It'd be so funny. So... Let's go to the developer breakdown, because that's all we got. That's literally all the trailer is. It doesn't explain anything about the game, what the game's going to be. Is, is it DLC? Is it not DLC? Is it, is it its own game? Please tell us about this game. Please. Hey, everybody. My name is Matt Cox, and I'm the creative director of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. And I'm thrilled to be able to go through this trailer with you today. Nice pink hoodie. Tiny nice, Wonderland looks good. Is an entirely new adventure set in an unpredictable fantasy world. Hell yeah. Whimsy and it's its own game. It's a tiny, an entirely new adventure set in its own fantasy game. Thank you, God. This game's going to be bonkers, Coughlin. It's going to be so good. Oh, man, I'm pumped. You pumped? I've never played a Borderlands game through all the way through before, so yeah, I'm okay with starting with this one. Hell yeah. Because... We might have to do Borderlands 2 then. Me and you, I, I'll, I'll do, we, we, we're not talking about that. We might do a Borderlands 2 playthrough because there's an amazing, just to get to the DLC that will set this up because there's a DLC in Borderlands 2 after the main game where Tiny Teen is a character that's introduced in that game and she basically takes all of the heroes, sets them down, and makes them play D&D. And the entire expansion is you playing your character, like one of the heroes, on this tabletop universe. So everything's to scale and all the creatures you're fighting are like plastic and like paper figures. And like all the loot is like D&D &D based. And it's really, really funny and hilarious and really good. Oh, so this is piggybacking off of a 
a joke in game. Yes. You remember the uh, Fable 3? There's a mission in Fable 3 where you go down to Earth and you're like, you play in D&D? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I do remember that, yeah. That is Absolutely. the that is the DLC one of the most memorable quests in Fable Three, by the way. Shout oh, out to Fable man. Three. It that is, is that is the yeah, entire I mean, DLC like in that game. Had it in, I feel like they also had something like that. Was it in one? Where it just had all these guys in rows behind it. They were getting mad when you didn't do what what, yeah. the, what it was supposed to happen. It's so good. And that same idea concept with uh it was was in Borderlands, which is the incredible art style, incredible storytelling capabilities that uh, gearbox and all them do at borderlands development studios but tiny tina's character is this insane explosive addict like not ex- like, like not an acting explosive way she's addicted to explosives and she's and, uh, like a demolitionist like she can make her own bombs and weapons and she's got this extremely hilarious personality a lot of people find her kind of annoying i find her extremely charming she's so funny and hilarious and everything she does is so inappropriate and great oh my god I cannot wait for this game. Oh, yeah. I, I actually, the thing is, is that I heard Tiny Tina, and I've never really played the game. I think there's, like, this whole thing about, like, you either love her or you hate her. Yeah, absolutely. So people will either be completely down for this game, or you'll absolutely hate it. It's an entirely new adventure set in an unpredictable fantasy world that's full of whimsy and wonder and high-powered weapons. My question is, is everyone a shooter? Is everyone a gun holder? Or is there going to be, like, swords and bows? More fantasy setting stuff. It's a four-player co-op game. see why not. So on your quest to defeat our main villain, the Dragon Lord, you're going to fight a Dragon Lord? of monsters from shambling skeletons to, like this, sharks with legs. So designing for this chaotic brand of fantasy lets us run wild with our imagination. So you can expect... Some slightly warped takes on high fantasy. That's good. I like that. The awesome Gabe Kunda voices the mysterious figure that you hear in this trailer. Now, he's not the protagonist. Players can actually create and customize their own multi-class heroes in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Players won't literally customize their weapons, but you will collect a wide variety of loot and a wide variety of rarity. So, Borderlands has always had four characters that you play that are well-defined, yeah. they voice perfectly fine by some really incredible good voice actors or famous people, and they only have three talent trees, much like World of Warcraft, but the classes are four characters. They just said you can create and customize your own character and build them any way you'd like to. That's brilliant. That is brilliant for the fantasy setting. I love that idea. That is so exciting. I think you would have to, right? Like, because... It's just, I mean, if you're going to be following the format of D and D, you do create your own character. So I'm glad that they do. Yeah, I think that'll be that's going to be a really, really good turn of pace because I think one of Borderlands 3's biggest fall offs is one they haven't released a new character and they just made everyone rebuy the game with the same four characters but with an extra talent tree. We talked a little bit about that. Really awful idea, not a great idea. Gearbox didn't work out. Really hope you learned from your lesson, and I think you guys have with the idea of being able to create your own character. That's called replayability. That's what gets people to rebuy a game and play it multiple times over. You got to be able to create that sort of drive to see what perspectives are different. If I play it like this, how is it different than when I play it like this? That's what makes games like World of Warcraft extremely popular and staying popular to this day. Because yeah, you can play through the entire game as a rogue, and then you can play through the entire game as a mage and have a completely different experience. This is going to be brilliant. I'm already 100% standing so for this guns, game. Spells, melee weapons, Let's continue. Of course, you'll have your skills that you can use, and then you'll be able to find loot-like armor and amulets and more. You can get armor for the first time? We've never been able to loot armor in the game. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's only guns. It's only guns in Borderlands. It's guns, and there's... That's not true. There's a shield you can equip, which you change, that gives you more shields or does a different effect. There's a grenade mod... There's a relic which changes like some type of attribute you have, like kind of like a trinket. It could, you, it could give you really cool effects. The grenade mod's basically an offensive trinket. The shield is basically a defensive trinket. The relic is basically like uh, a, a tribute trinket. And then there is a uh, class mod that basically modifies something on your class. So think of it like a legendary weapon. Okay. In this game, Other than that, it's all guns. So armor would be huge too. Because of their power and their variety of behaviors. Spells are mini skills. That's fun. Our 
cast is incredible. We have the headstrong Captain Valentine, the rule-obsessed robot Fret, and of course our tyrant villain Dragon Lord, and Tiny Tina, and they're all brought to life by these great actors. Hell yeah. And of course, enter a magical diamond binocorn leaping in to save the day here. This speaks to the wild and irreverent humor in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Now, all of this takes place in a game within a game as players experience a round of Bunkers and Badasses, a chaotic fantasy tabletop adventure where anything can happen. The very unpredictable yes. Tiny Tina makes the rules, she changes the world on the fly, and guides players on their epic fantasy. So it is going to be exactly now, like the, the DLC. You're playing D&D. Springs from this chaos. Oh, oh I fucking love this. After Assault on Dragon Keep, Oh man, but are you gonna have a roll for stats Ooh. too? No, I don't think so. That's just they didn't make you do that in the other game. It's still like very like live action first person shooter. It's not like like turn based or anything else. Uh, Alvar, creating your character could be quite interesting. But it, they did just say this takes place shortly after Dragon Keep, which was the DLC with Tiny Tina in Borderlands Two. So we are going to have to play through that before this game comes out. At least one point oh. with Coughlin on stream. Means that's okay because this is a brand new adventure in a brand Shit, new we might be able to do a whole Borderlands series. That would be quite fun. We absolutely love Tina. I think you would love Borderlands. I'm surprised you've not played through it. Absolute joy working on this game. So we're very excited for everyone and it's to hard share to, this experience. Whenever everybody's demanding your attention, all these games. I know. I envy those who could, who could, who are willing to just bounce from game to game. I know, me too. Is that... She is her younger self. I did just realize that. Someone in comments probably already commented, did you notice that she's younger? And then like, edited version. Oh, never mind, you said it. <laughs> because in Borderlands <laughs> 3, she's a teenager. And here, she's her younger self right out of the DLC. She's her little baby self. She's a kid. She's like 10 years old here. In Borderlands 3, let's see if I can pull up a picture without it being porn. Please don't be porn. Borderlands oh 3, Tiny Tina, adult. Oh my gosh. It's it's risky. It's oh risky, God. chat. You, oh my goodness. Okay, so she's uh, an adult. You guys can see right here. See? She's an adult. That's what we're looking at. Nothing else. You guys saw nothing else. Oh, crap. That's not a picture. Look at this right here. That's it. That's all we're looking at. She's an adult. You guys can see that she's older than what she looked like. It's starting to get bad, but it's not that bad yet. <laughs> so yeah, she's her kid self here. To deviant art level. Yeah, we we didn't scroll all the way down. We're fine. We're fine. We stayed in the we stayed in the not so family friendly area. But I love her as a kid. I actually didn't like her as an adult, really. So I'm excited that they actually learned from that. I really hope this does well. I hope it's awesome. I'll be giving it my money. It has my money already. I'm sold. Excellent trailer. Amazing idea to do a developer breakdown to answer the questions we all had from not so revealing trailer, but well done, guys. I'm excited. Now, this is the game that you probably are most excited about because you kind of play these type of games. I don't necessarily play these type of games. Um, for all you guys, we're talking about Elden Ring. Um, that is a game written by George R. R. Martin, the author of the Game of Thrones series and the amazing mind behind Game of Thrones TV series as well on HBO. It is directed by Namco, or Namco, Banda Namco, and produced by them. So it's gonna do very well, and it is absolutely stunning. But for me, I can only describe this game as the, as like a Dark Souls-esque single player RPG extremely difficult very similar combat very similar monsters but probably a way better story so you want to say anything before we watch it oh yeah i think this has a lot of good people behind it i mean obviously george r, r. martin taking place in the storyline now i'm going to put a little bit of a caveat here because george r. r martin still has a book to work on so i don't know how much he actually took place how much he actually partook in developing the story for this yeah but even if he just set certain george R. R. martin is great at his dialogue yeah in fact you can very clearly see the quality of dialogue between let's say season four of game of thrones and season eight of game of thrones sure right? i would even so, go as far as to so... say that he's an incredible character creator i would say that the universe yes. he created was good well established it was very easy to follow it's very hard to do that as an author it's something that i'm struggling with right now with my book but character creation 
he absolutely nails it out of the park. Every detail about the characters in the books translated to the TV series, translated to our own imagination interpretation of them are spot on to similar. That is because he's so good at well-established characters. And I really hope that translates to this game. I think he's going to be... And that's one of my... I don't want to call it a concern, but I am very curious as to see how that can be portrayed in a game where usually the protagonist is silent. Yep. And the you one know. thing that is very interesting about this is this is going to be a game that's Dark Souls-esque with a lot of Eastern influence. A lot of the monsters seem like they're from Eastern lore or they're designed like a Final Fantasy game. And a lot of the main characters do look straight out of Dark Souls, but also with a lot of Eastern influence. So you could call this a Western meets Eastern clash. It absolutely is. It like, looks it's, beautiful. You have Eastern like mo monsters in Western settings. Yeah, like I, like the, all the Gothic mm -hmm. involved here. And so a lot I of the we're gonna look really cool. Yeah, and a lot of the writing from the West with George R. R. Martin could play into the story a little bit. It's gonna be. I think it'll be great. It'll be an incredible once playthrough. It might be too difficult for me. I don't really play these over difficult games like Dark Souls or Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> Even though I have it on my Switch, I just don't I don't like to be tortured like that. I know some people really do enjoy the challenge and overcoming those challenges. For me, I'm more into overcoming challenges with groups of people versus independently. However, if this is on Xbox, which I believe it will be, we might be giving this a one to go through. So this is the trailer without further ado. I think no matter what everyone can take away from this, it looks stunning. It looks absolutely stunning. Incredible. The life tree or world tree. Very Dark Souls looking character there. Now I don't personally know if there's mounts in Dark Souls, but that might be a unique model to this game because of the ginormous world they want you to explore. You might not. I you, love that that creature with the bell. Yeah. The like that, it looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just love how giant everything is and how fantastical everything is and how creepy and unique, very unique things are. You guys can see a lot of the monsters are very Eastern influenced, straight out of like a Final Fantasy game or some of these crazy Japanese story games they've had released recently, like Sekiro. Chilling by the campfire. That dragon is so gorgeous. The four wings. Oh, it's beautiful. Buckethead. Shout out to Buckethead real fast. Oh, so the combat oh, looks it's... so similar to Dark Souls to me. Oh yeah, I mean it's going to be heavily influenced for sure. But I am extremely curious like, but what if it ends up being more Brandish, extremely like... fast paced? Like, uh, what is it? Uh... it... What's it, a good example of a game that's extremely fast-paced like that? I think uh, Fable is, is... It is on Xbox. That is interesting. I guess Fable, yeah. I guess Fable does really have that fast-paced uh, hack-and-slash-play style. Live so, action. Like, like, everything's happening real-time. Yeah. Yeah. This was what's interesting. Maybe that could be what it is. Yeah, there's like... Yeah. There's one scene that was super Fable reminiscent to me for combat. There's one scene where he reses two people with a stone. Reminds uh -huh. me of a spell where you summon ghosts and spirits to fight with you in Fable. 
and then they started oh, attacking yeah. things and it seemed like this right here this looks straight out of fable but with like better graphics it could have uh, a better magic tree oh yeah there, where... there could be like better talent trees or like different sort yeah. of play styles like skyrim you could be playing this like a necromancer it, you, know? you could i wonder what they're gonna do with that so here you can see like they're fighting with him he rolled there, he shot an arrow, so it's like there's obviously different skill sets, different play styles for sure. Maybe this could be really, really good, like a Skyrim, but like a Final Fantasy Skyrim. That would be pretty dope. This is one of those games where this was the first gameplay footage we've seen of it. This was all straight gameplay, they said, if that's true or not. It looks straight out of the game. Nothing looks augmented or complete CGI like computer like like a visual scene is what i mean like this looks like it's rendered in game and if it's on xbox it might go on game pass if it's on game pass i'll definitely try it i don't know if it'll be worth the 85 dollars they'll probably put a tag on it are you excited about it Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't say that I'm like super excited about it, like I'm marking my calendar, mm -hmm. but whenever it comes out, I'm definitely going to look to try it. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on it. I, I agree, I won't be marking my calendar. My excitement level probably is about, I'd say a four, like a low four for me. It says January 21st, 2022, so about a year away, a little bit more than a year away, less than uh, nine months, I think. So that's if very I get interesting. That Xbox Series X that's going to be on my calendar. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. All I'm right. really just more excited for for Sunday for the Halo Infinite. So I'm pretty excited about that. Tomorrow. Yeah. If this video does extremely well today and tomorrow, and we get some really really good response in Gilded, again, link will be in the description below to apply to join our server. We'll let you guys in, and then we can have these discussions outside of stream and outside of videos. Thank you guys so much for joining it. If you guys do like this content, please like the crap out of this video so we have a really good idea of what to keep doing more of. Um, if you guys like this enough, maybe we'll go back and look at all the different trailers. But as of right now, we'll probably be doing a live action uh, watch party of E3, especially the Microsoft panel and the Blizzard panel. Um, Nintendo says they're going to be doing something, but they always end up doing their own. There's going to be some Bethesda stuff, which again, will go under Microsoft. I'm excited to see what these giant A-list companies are going to bring to the table, but like he said, the most exciting thing I'm worried about, worried slash really excited about, is Halo Infinite update. Can we get rid of Greg? Should we get rid of Greg? That's the real question. And I'll hopefully it's Greg's good. <laughs> He's just happy to be there. He's just so happy. <laughs> That's uh, a skull where every, <laughs> every brute has yeah. that same happy to be here face on. Yeah, dude, that would actually be, like, super out of Craig Halo. That would be super out of, <laughs> super out of Microsoft to do, where it's just, like, this, like, all brutes end up looking like this as a skull. <laughs> There's, like, playthroughs of it, but it makes them super happy. They're just, like, they're just happy to be there, man. They're, like, they're in the Halo Infinite trailer. He can't complain. He can't complain. He's good. He's chilling. He's straight chilling. Thank you guys so much. Uh, oh, I didn't even show you guys. Here, this is this is Greg. This is what we're talking about. He's a brute that was released in the original Halo Infinite teaser trailer a couple years back. Two years back, I think. And uh, oh, no, it was last year. It's a campaign trailer. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was last year the campaign trailer, and everyone shit on yeah. this because it looked horrible. But it kind of has become a meme where it's like this brute that looks just like this. Looks like a Halo, like an Xbox 360 brute back in Halo 2. <laughs> And they're like, what do you mean we're like 20 years out of that and we're still getting brutes that look like this? So it kind of like gave the entire company like a kick in the ass to go back and revise all their graphics. So instead of that game being released last, last December, which it was supposed to with the Xbox Series X, they've delayed it. This is going to be the first big update that we've gotten since this, besides like a lot of stuff on Instagram and whatnot. So that'll be exciting. Live watch party on Sunday. We'll put on the schedule. Mark your guys' calendars. We'll catch you guys then. Thank you so much for joining us. I really do appreciate it. Keep supporting us. And definitely, if you guys want to support us more, go check out redthedude.com. You guys can look at my merchandise, donate to the stream or channel directly, or you guys can sub to us on Gilded and get extra benefits in stream and in Gilded itself. Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Coughlin probably appreciates it. Oh, absolutely. I'm glad that uh, Zoe will do this with the end. Hopefully we can uh, do this again. Once again, looking forward to that. Xbox Bethesda. Oh, maybe some Elder Scrolls 
you know, uh, six coming out. Ooh, Maybe I would that love that. Out. I hope they make an Elder Scrolls six game instead of ESO. Maybe Let's... a good Fallout game. Ooh, huh? that would be Fallout pretty good. That? We'll see. We shall see. Thank you guys so much for catching the next one. See ya. Bye.